Thank you. Um, could you say something about um, social context and the impact that, um, I'm thinking particularly in children, that um, access to media and video games, it's a very sort of, you know, well-trodden path, that one, but what's, what's the impact of also having children in a, an environment where it's socially acceptable to be accessing that sort of material and there is no other... Um, <coughs> there's nothing else in their environment that actually counters that and limits it. So it sort of becomes ingrained from a very early age. Could you comment on that, please? I can try, although um, I wouldn't consider myself to be an expert in this, that particular field at all. And you're, you know, again, people will know that this is a highly contentious area. I think the, 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 the difficulty is that studies of child development are really difficult to do because, because Children's brains are organic. We're talking about an organic growth trajectory. And what we do know is that it's, if you take a group of 10 children and look at their growth trajectories and their developments, they have very different pathways. Um, but, and the, there are obviously there are influences of, of genes in terms of resilience and stress, but environmental stresses can come in and direct people's trajectories in quite unexpected ways that actually luck and chance actually play quite an, can have quite an unexpected effect on people's development. So I think for me, the exposure to those images, I know Susan Greenfield thinks that, there, it's about, you know, that, that it has a negative effect through overstimulation, but I think you put your finger on it, where if that's the only input that they're getting, I think the question of the, con the attachment context, the social context in which children are being raised, is crucial. Because in order to develop a social brain, to be, have a mind that is able to think about itself but also able to think about the minds of others, you need to grow that mind in a relational context, which is probably why neglect is so, is so damaging. So, you see, it depends a little bit. If a child is only looking at dreadful images and there's absolutely no other input going in, then I'm guessing that that might well make a contribution, depending on whether other risk factors were present. I don't think we've got any way of proving any type of causal link. But I think, for me, it's much more about what, what we might be saying about where are the, where's the relational development for children? Where are we putting in how children grow their minds? The growing a social mind is such a hugely complicated and important task that there, and there are influences that can come in and have negative effects. Whether there'll be permanent negative effects, I think, is, is very hard to answer. And anecdotally, I can tell you that you know, the, the people that I work with, I wouldn't say that exposure to video violence or horrible images has, been, has made any significant contribution to, to violence in the group, the people that I know best, um, possibly because there's been so much else going on. Um, so, I mean, it's a very hard question to address, which is why nobody's come up with a very clear answer, I think. I suppose the only other thing is just, I mean, we can go on, but the only other thing I, I think, is, I think is, is relevant here is something about attitudes to vulnerability, because that, I think, is a key issue, particularly for, for small boys. <laughs> 